Can you imagine glitter falling from the sky? Or if rain was colourful enough that we wouldn't mind it raining every day? Why do rainbows make us so happy? And the aurora borealis being so magical and mystical? That's why art is in the eye of the beholder. Hi everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to use one mould and show you three different techniques. You might or might not like them, but hopefully they will inspire you to play around with different mediums. First up, I'm going to play with these chameleon pigments. These colour shift pigments can be mesmerising. I'd have a whole wall of chameleon pigments, as in painted. That would cost a bomb. But boy, would it look cool. I've turned the mould inside out so I can easily place the colour. You can use a wipe to eliminate any excess. But remember that the first colour that touches the mould will be the colour you will see. I'm not going for any particular colour scheme. But I will be using all eight of the colours and placing them into the little concave areas. If you can hear snoring in the background, it's my baby, my fur baby. She is snoring. I've decided not to use these two little ones, as they are very similar to the ones I'm using. I don't want to use the same colours all over, so I've decided to leave some blanks in order to then have more than one colour on each one. Now that probably just didn't make any sense, so I'm just going to show you. Okay, so in a small cup, I'm adding a small amount of each of the pigments. I'm not going to mix them all together. I'm going to leave them as they are. With a small soft brush, I'm dabbing the pigments all over the blank areas. I find that makeup brushes are perfect for these kind of pigments. The bristles on makeup brushes are a lot softer. Get yourself a pack, a cheap pack, or maybe you have some lying around at home. And with a soft blending brush, I'll blend the colours into the mould. No two spaces will be the same with this technique. The mould needs to be turned back to its original side. I'll keep blending inside to make sure I've reached all the areas of the mould. For the resin, I'll be using Let's Resin Black Epoxy, which is a one-to-one -one by volume. This mould needs 120ml, therefore 60ml of A and 60ml of B. This mixing machine from Istoyo is fantastic. No more tied wrists and no bubbles. I have a discount code in my description box. As I still have some pigment left over in the cup, I might as well use it with the resin. Not that it will do anything, <laughs> but it sure looks pretty floating. Pour the mixture into the mould and just tap it softly to release any trapped bubbles. This resin is jet black. Once it cures, it has a beautiful shine. Not that you're going to see it, but the pigments will be hiding the black. For this second technique, I'll be using Let's Resin Neon Powders. All the products I use will be added in the description box. You will also find discount codes. I'm going to mix them in with a bit of UV resin and add them into little bottles. I will also be using this UV white from Resin Rockers. I'm placing a dab of colour into the socket and using my UV torch to cure it before placing another colour on top. I want to have about three different colour layers in each one. Make sure you cure each layer before adding your next colour. This is going to take a while, so be patient and just enjoy the process. 
Okay, this took a little longer than expected and my butt hurts for sitting in the same position for such a long time. For this one, I'll be using Let's Resin Fast Cure, which is also one-to-one -one by volume. You can demold it in four hours. It's ready. And it kind of reminds me of the Daleks from Doctor Who. And it's full of thousands of little bubbles. For this technique, I'm using a cute dandelion. I'm checking to see how deep I want it to hang inside. I'm using some pliers to shorten the wire stem. I'm making sure I place it back onto the styrofoam which came with it and I can use it to hold the dandelion into place. For resin, I'm going to use the Stoyo 1 to 1 by volume. I really like this stuff. Ugh, I'm nervous, but I'm ready to pour the resin into the mould. I'm going as high as three quarters of the mould. Oopsie, bit too much, silly me. Now to place the dandelion. I'm going to place it as carefully as I can into the resin. Now I'm hoping there'll be the least amount of bubbles. I don't have a vacuum chamber. Therefore, it's all down to luck. Pour the rest of the resin to the top of the mould. I'm trying to achieve a kaleidoscope effect. Fingers crossed. Time to demould. Don't worry about the edge, it can be sanded down. It left a pretty cool effect on the styrofoam. Interesting. I'm going to use my pliers to cut the stem before I do mould it. Knowing me, I'll probably stab myself if I don't. Let's demold. Don't forget to hit the boop button and subscribe if you haven't already. The dandelion isn't smack in the middle, but it's okay. It should still do the kaleidoscope effect from close up. I can't see any bubbles, so I'm definitely going to do this again, but in a sphere so that the dandelion will be defined and visible. I did make another one, but I added some Malibu diamond sparkle, just because it's pretty. <laughs>